Hey folks, Animana Juby here. Monster Hunter World is finally here, and so far it's amazing. So this guy will go over tips for absolute beginners to the Monster Hunter series. If you're a veteran, you probably already know what you're doing. Just to preface this guide, this game does do a fantastic job as far as tutorials go. But if you have any advice for new players when you're watching this video that may not be obvious, be sure to pop them in the comments below because the more people that get advice to play this game, the better. Otherwise, it's recommend players do pay attention to those tutorials at the start of the game as they do cover a lot of information in a very well written way. Another thing to note is, this is also my first Monster Hunter game. I've been unable to get into the previous games, whether or not it's other games I've had to play at the time or I've just found it too difficult or I didn't know what to do. But with this one, it's so much better, so much easier to get into. So I'm using this as a method for me to get into the game and understand it, and also to pass on this clarity and motivation to others to help them get into this game as well. Now with those points out of the way, let's dive into this 20 tips for Monster Hunter World. While your Palico Cat does level up, the only number for yourself, your main character, that will increase is your Hunter level. Now this will open up restricted hunts when you're playing with other players, and the higher your number is, the more access you'll have to other hunts. However, as far as character progression goes, this comes from your weapon and armor upgrades. And furthermore, farming monsters, the whole point of this game, repeatedly will net you monster parts that you can use to upgrade your weapons and gear even further and increase those stats. Different weapons handle differently, which should be obvious, but some weapons are harder to get used to than others. Now the best thing to go about this is to head to your personal quarters and talk to your little cat that takes care of your house and you'll be able to join the training area to get the hang of different weapons before you hit that wall of frustration when you realize, hey, maybe this weapon isn't for me. So definitely take that time to look into each weapon or at least try each weapon that you think might look cool and might be up your alley, just to know that it definitely is. While this is a multiplayer game, you'll need to progress into the story to a certain point to get access to multiplayer missions. And then, you're going to have to keep progressing the story to unlock more areas and more monsters to be able to play with other players. So just keep moving through these story quests, and then jump into some multiplayer games from here and there, and you'll be able to get through and play with your friends. But, you won't be able to do it straight away, so do do those story missions. Speaking of playing with friends, you can join up to 8 squads, which act kind of similar to a guild in other games. These are free to make, and it will make it easier to jump into sessions with other players and acquaintances, rather than jumping into a session with a whole bunch of randoms you've never met before. Now these also house up to 50 players per squad, so 8 times 50, that's 400 players you could have at your disposal to play with. Pretty good. You can gain new gadgets by finding the Grimalkin or Palico tribes unique to each zone. Just find the markings around the map, they look like cave paintings, and then set them as your waypoint once you see the icon that has two of the little Palicos on it. And once you've done that, all you have to do is follow your scout flies and it'll take you all the way to where the Palico is. Now, once you find the Palico, you're more than likely going to have to chase them or follow them to their actual, I guess, little village area. Now, once you've caught up to them, your Palico will have a little chat to the Grimalkin and then they'll ask them if they want to join the tribe with them. And then when you get back to town and you head to your private quarters, your Palico will also have a little talk to you and more likely than not, it's going to be able to tell you, hey, I've got this new ability I can do. Out in missions, quests, and expeditions, you'll be able to select the capture net and equip it to capture endemic life to the area. You'll be able to also set these as your pets in your personal quarters. To catch them, just aim the net while holding L2 or left trigger, and then once you've aimed it, shoot with the R2 or right trigger. Once the square goes orange, this is when you know it's currently in range to capture. Some creatures may require sneaking up and others some other tactics to capture, but you can do this for bugs, fish, birds, and even the little weird rabbit hair things that you see around the start of the forest area. When attacking monsters, keep an eye on the color of the damage numbers popping up as you do each hit. Big orange numbers means you're hitting weak points or points of the enemy that are susceptible to damage. If the numbers popping up are white or grey, it's likely that you're attacking a stronger part of the monster, such as tough skin or like a horn kind of area or a plated area. If you're doing low damage in general, it's probably an idea to consider sharpening your weapon. Just check that little icon with the little knife at the top corner of the screen. It should be green if you want to be doing the most damage, but it'll go down to orange and then yellow and stuff like that once you do deplete the sharpness. 
Speaking of monster weak points, by opening your hunter notes from the menu, you can choose monster field guide to view in-depth details on each monster. Now by tabbing across to physiology, you'll be able to see anatomical views of each monster and it will show you exactly where the monsters will take the most damage. If you're also having trouble with fighting a monster, choose the fire SOS flare from the quest menu. Uh, this will open up your quest to other players to search for you and also join in your mission to help you take down that monster. This is very useful and helpful for players that are fresh to Monster Hunter like myself. Assign quest a sorry quest. To have players join you in these quests though, you will need to get to a point of the quest where all of the cutscenes have been completed and played out. Usually there's a monster you've got to fight at this point and this is where players are able to join in the battle with you. There is also a trophy for collecting players guild cards. These are basically calling cards for each player including yourself that you can use to gather information about them and track how far they're going in the game or what they've hunted, what weapon they tend to use and all those little bits and pieces. So be sure to share those from the info menu uh, and then send it to them and then you can also receive from those players as well. To get the trophy, however, you do need to collect 50 of these, which definitely means that we need to go out and be a little bit more social in the community. So go and make some friends, share those guild cards, and you might actually make some really good friends that will stick with you for the next Monster Hunter game. Start out by buying or crafting high defense armor before using up all your armor spheres to upgrade the pieces you have. This will save them for when you have better armor later on from killing better monsters, allowing you to boost those high defense pieces even higher. And plus, they'll have better skill abilities that you'll be able to take advantage of as well. If your game gets put into offline mode, whether you've been idling or there's been a network error, Go to the quest board once you do have access to the internet and select online session and then join or create your own session. This will force the game to log into the servers again without having to exit the game or reload the game completely. By visiting the gathering hub on the fourth floor of the main town, you'll be able to meet up with other players, check their gear and you can even arm wrestle them. So this is the best meeting spot before going out on a mission because you're gonna know the players are there and then you're gonna go out to the mission and you know exactly what they look like and who's gonna be equipped with what. When you've got a whole bunch of items cluttering your pouch, you can save time by transferring unneeded items into your item box. By simply moving across full stacks of items instead of going one by one, you can basically save heaps of time. All you have to do for this is to press R1 or right bumper and basically it's going to just dump that whole stack of items into your main item box stash. Now this game also scales monster difficulty by the amount of players in a party. So by design, story missions should be easy to solo compared to in a full party. Uh, this is also a good way to learn how to handle yourself when you're the primary target of a monster. It'll help you immensely in the long run. Some items don't transfer into your item box after battle or missions. Ores, ammo resources, herbs and meats do, but things like mushrooms and stones on the ground do not. Uh, some items are an exception to these rules, for example mushrooms. Sometimes you'll have specific ones that will have account item in its tooltip so that you do know that if you pick that item up or find that item it is going to go to your item box after battle. So any items that do not transfer outside of a mission will actually give you research points however so it isn't all lost. You can grapple to higher locations pretty quickly or over the head of a monster as they're trying to run away. All you have to do is aim for the bright glowing beetles and from there you'll be able to grapple onto them and it'll swing you up and then you can use your jump button to jump across. All you have to do is press L2 or the left trigger and then circle or B to be able to target them and then grapple. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to grapple your way to the top of the Coral Highland or different stages like that. Basically any of those stages that are very vertical where you're fighting a monster and their nest just happens to be right at the top of the peak of the stage. So it'll save you a lot of time getting up that chase. Alongside quests and missions, you can also have 50 investigations active. You need to go and activate these at the resource center, but these will add extra options for hunting monsters in different styles, and also giving you different rewards, which will change things up a little and give you 
a different way of getting all those equipment pieces that you want to get unlocked. You can mount monsters by jumping on them. Similar to that tip I did about the glowing beetles, you'll be able to jump down and attack them from a great height, and be able to grab onto them and do a whole bunch of damage. This works from little ledges where you've got enough height to be able to jump over them and clear them, or from really high ledges like a big cliff or something like that. Once you're mounted a monster, you can get in a lot of attacks by pressing the triangle or the Y button. So you'll also have to press the R2 button or the right trigger button to make sure you're able to brace and grab onto them. After a certain amount of time also, you'll knock them to the ground and jump off. This is where your party, or just yourself if you're solo, are going to be able to get in a lot of hits and it'll basically whittle down the monster a lot faster as well. So definitely take the height to your advantage. 